Hey everyone. So the next episode should be coming up soon, but in the next episode we're going to finally set up how an object can be placed in a 3D space. And to do this we're going to need to understand how an object can be transformed using matrices. So I figured I'd just make a quick video describing how all this works. And if you're already familiar with this, just feel free to skip over the video. Alright, so here we go. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to be using some diagrams that are from this website here. It's codinglabs.net. I'm going to include a link to it in the comp or in the description rather. And this site has a particularly good explanation of how it all works, so I would highly recommend checking them out, especially if you didn't fully understand my explanation. I'm just going to go through a quick summary of it. So first off, we have this image right here. This is just a standard coordinate system. And in this case, it's three-dimensional. You have x, y, and z. So down here, we have a teapot. And as you can see, this teapot has its own coordinate system. So this is as though it were being made in a modeling program of some sort. Anytime you make a 3D model in a modeling program, like Blender or Maya or anything like that, you end up building it in relation to a coordinate system that's already set up in that editor. So in this case, whatever this teapot was made in, it's being set at position uh, 1x, 1y, and 1z. But we don't necessarily want its position to always be 1, 1, 1. When we import it into the game, we want to be able to set a position for it, which means that we're going to have to transform the position of the, um, of the teapot. So if you look down here, these are some transformations that you can make. The idea is that you're just changing its coordinate system a little bit. Now the way that we do this is we actually take every vertex of the model that we want to transform and we multiply each one, the, the values of that vertex, by a 4x4 four four matrix, which is our transformation matrix. And that contains information about uh, the orientation of the three axes after we've uh, transformed the vertex and also how far the new origin will be from the current origin once the transformation is complete. So first, uh, like I said, we want the model to be in a specific position in the game world. And so the way we do that, let's go down here a little bit, we want to take the object that is currently in model space um, and we're going to transform that into the world space that we have within our, our game world. So now that we've done that, we can take the model that we had in model space and put it into any position and orientation in our world space that we want. So we could have, you know, like a teapot that's on a shelf, you know, 50 feet away from the origin instead of, you know, right on the origin. So now that we have it positioned properly in the world, the issue is that we're actually viewing the scene from a camera object. So we, we care about its orientation within world space, but then we also need to give it a proper orientation in camera space. So what that is down here, or actually it's normally referred to as view space. So we already have all the, the teapots and they've been given a position within our world now, but we need them to have a position relative to our camera as if the camera were the origin. So that way it has a under, the, the engine has an understanding of where these vertices are if they're being viewed from this position. So at this point, you would have all of the vertices in your world, they've all been transformed so that they have a proper world position, and then they're all transformed again so they have a position relative to the camera. So now everything is lined up for the camera, and that sounds like everything you would need, but you actually need to transform them one more time because we have something called projection space. And what that is, you've set everything up so it's relative to your camera, but ultimately you you don't really want it in that sort of space because you are going to need to project everything to the computer screen. And the computer screen is a 2D space. It isn't actually 3D, so what you need to do is you need to smash everything so that it's in a coordinate system that only goes from 0 to 1. So then we're going to create a projection matrix, and that's going to transform everything from our view space into screen space. So it's going to put it into a coordinate system where it only travels from 0 to 1 in, or, or 0 to negative 1 along any of the axes. So all of these transformations take place in our vertex shader 
and then the vertices are then passed through the graphics pipeline and they are rendered after the fact. So just to sum everything up, you need three matrices to transform each vertex. You've got the world matrix, which gives the vertices a position within your game's world. You have the view matrix, which gives your vertices a position in reference to your camera's position. And then you have a projection matrix, which gives the vertices a position in reference to your computer's screen. So that's pretty much all you need to know. In the next episode, we're going to be creating those trans transformation matrices, and then we're going to store them in a buffer so that we can access them from our vertex shader and translate each vertex accordingly. All right, thanks for watching.